Hello, welcome back to the Spirit of Watercolor. Linda's back, hi! And I want to talk a little bit today about a variegated wash, which we talked about in our last video, but I decided to make a short video on this separately. This is a, par a part of our series about mixing colors. And we talked in the first one, of course, about uh, just mixing on the palette. And then we also did a demonstration of uh, glazing, which is when you paint a color onto the paper and then it dries and then you come back over with a non-staining color. The first color is staining. So go watch that video if you haven't because it's it just simplifies and clarifies the ways to use uh, watercolor successfully and get vibrant and transparent and luminous colors. And then today, back to the palette here, um, what we're gonna talk about is um, taking the paints from our palette this is my famous, not famous, but my John Pike palette, which I love. And um, I'm going to take paints from here, and I'm going to take one color, put it on the paper. Now this is wet on wet technique, so stay tuned. And then we will take, I guess it can be wet on wet or wet on dry, actually. Uh, I'll show both. Okay. And then what we do is we take, um, and we put one paint on, and then we take the other paint, and basically just put it next to it or bring them together and they will just kind of blend into each other. It's a beautiful, um, wonderful thing that watercolors do that other paint uh, mediums don't necessarily do. I, I think you probably could do this with acrylics and it, it probably would have a similar effect. But the trick is that these are so transparent that they create some really beautiful things when they blend themselves together. So let's let's take a look at that. There's a few things to look at with with variegation. So new new idea to some people, I'm sure. So let's let's stay tuned for the next part of this video, the demonstration. Okay, I'll see you at the table. Okay, here's an example of just uh, variegated washes just flowing together. A totally abstracted lands landscape. I love this kind of thing because it, it just goes and flows and they run together all the colors, right? And it's just not your typical landscape. In fact, it's quite exciting and um, maybe even other planetary, <laughs> not of this world. Um, but, you know, you can take these kinds of things and pull them more into realism. But I'm going to show you how to just bring some colors together and you can kind of uh, decide what you want to do with these variegated washes. Okay, all right. Okay, so here's our white paper with tape on it. And let's see. <clears throat> I'm just going to do some variegated wash here. And so we'll probably, I mean, you can wet the paper or not. It's really up to you. Um, Looking at the sample I had for you of sort of my abstracted landscape, I actually did wet the paper and then uh, brought in sort of a sky, I'm sorry, a land area. And then um, I will leave the top where it might be sky dry. But um, I'm just going to let these uh, pink colors flow together, okay? So first, let's um, spritz our water a little onto our palette that's getting been dry for a while. Sorry, I'm not, I should have this more. Not, well, I'm just holding the camera, but I guess that could work. But anyway, we have these beautiful yellows here. Nice. I'm not practicing what I preach because I should have much more paint on my, um... Ooh, look at that, right? It's on the wet paper, so it's flowing a bit, right? So there's some really nice land starting off, and I'm just using whatever colors get me happy and excited today, okay? And then what we're going to do is after we get in a lot of this beautiful color, and this is Sennelier beautiful paints that I've just bought and I'm still learning 
what they're about and what they can do. Um, I'm going to bring in the colors and then I'm going to variegate, which means I'm going to take other colors here. We could do some really intense, beautiful reds. And what's going to happen is they're just going to flow into the other ones, okay? Ah, see? Let them just bleed together and run together. And uh, my paper's a little wet, so they may mix. If it's not wet enough, I will mix a little more and let them run together, okay? So, as I've said before, it's just a wonderful way of mixing colors on the paper. Okay. Um, for now, I'm just going to use the two colors so you can just see them mixing together. and They'll kind of blend and create their own uh, new colors between themselves here. I may get some... Um, uh, I might keep some of the white of the paper there. I like that. But I might like to... Uh, Get some interesting oranges because they're mixing themselves here. It's like that Nita Engels talks about letting a pa painting paint itself. Okay. okay, so the land on my variegated wash has dried and I'm going to do the sky now, which is going to be the same. Here we have on my palette, I'm mixing two blues. Here we have a phthalo and a cerulean type blue so I can um, uh, bring those together and they'll mesh together and they're one's a little more cool green and one's a little more of a violety blue so it will be a subtle variegation um, I could put in another color but I think just for today's purpose we'll just do it this way okay I'm gonna go over to my painting and we're just going to wet this down with a little water. It, you don't have to do this, but oftentimes just getting a little saturation of water will help things flow a little better. Okay? Just like that. Okay. Now that's got to set for a minute. All right. Okay. Remove the palette closer. And so the phthalos here and the cerulean there. And here's my painting and it's been wetted and it should move a little more. I Maybe I didn't get it wet enough. We'll see, huh? But um, here, let's get that paint. It's more saturated. There we go. And we'll start to get um, some color in. I'm just going to have a cloudy sky. So um, I'm just going to bring in the paints wherever I want them. And leave the rest to be cloud, okay? Did you ever notice that clouds sometimes look like they're blue and the sky is white? <laughs> Just saying. Okay, so I'm bringing in this blue, the, the more richer purpley blue, okay? And it's going to create some really pretty sky. And I'm also bringing in, and this is how I do it, um, you could do this as a flat wash and just put one color on the top and then you know, uh, spread to the next color. But I, when I do variegations, I just tend to do it right on the paper and I just do it, you know, so that these colors can just blend into each other. Okay, now I'm gonna put a whole lot of this more cool greenish blue and let it merge into the, um, the other blue. And it'll create some dimension and some interesting um, forward and backward effects, okay? All right. As much as I wetted that paper, it still seems to be giving me a little bit of trouble. But anyway, let's uh, blend some of this a little more soft. I'm uh, bringing in some softer blue in here as well, which is just more water for pigment, okay? And again, this was my sort of abstracted uh, landscape, so I'm not really too worried about uh, it looking realistic, but it's going to be to the viewer definitely, you know, about um, the uh, you know, fact that it's a sky and land. And then one can decide how realistic or less they want to make this become. Okay.
You see how the greens and the blues are merging? Now if this starts to get a little too wet, I can move some of that out. Or if I bring my paper down, it was at a 30 degree angle. That'll keep it from um, you know, going where I don't want to. Now see how these colors are running together? I'm letting gravity pull it in a different direction. Okay. So I think that's just lovely right in there. The rest of this I will kind of let flow together. Okay. And I might have this flow to the white of the paper down at the bottom just because that's what I feel like doing. Or a very light blue. And that wants to if that wants to kind of flow straight down and I want it to kind of merge, I'm gonna lift my board again to angle that. And there's some granulations and some beautiful things happening there. I might like something quite as lovely happening over on the other side too. Okay. I better move this over so you can see that. All right. Hold on. Okay. Let's get that that purpley blue is just beautiful. And I would like more of that in my sky. And more drama. But as again you're seeing these colors are going to blend and merge and it's just exciting and beautiful compared with just a you know simple clean sky that is just flat blue, you know. So I'm not as loaded on the palette with the um, other blue. You can add three colors. Um, generally, um, I, I, I tend to go with just two, but I think you can do three and you could, uh, well, you could add as many as you want and they can run together, I suppose, but you'll have to be careful you're not running into sort of a mud state either, okay? Okay, at this point, I'm just kind of wanting to even things out a little bit to make it sky-like. Also, paper towels should always be handy in case you get too much water. But um, one thing you can always do is if your brushes get too wet, that's that can be a problem. Um, and so take your brush and take out the water so you don't have quite so much, okay? And then we can make something quite lovely here. Bring some of that together. So that has a little more of a flow of a sky look going on. Okay. Right. And of course the different values, which is something else I need to make a video about, is um, makes the painting more interesting. From the lightest values, the more water to the paint, to the most concentrated to get the really beautiful uh, effects. I'm going to try to get in close on this. So you can see the washes blending together. Isn't that pretty? And then here we have the, the land. Oops. I'm going to get my camera in there. I go like this again. And you can see the interest. I'm going to drop some blue, there we go, into this land. I didn't really plan that. I mean, you can, if you wish, after things dry, merge some of that. But right now, I'm kind of liking the some of the hard edge and the whites and the blending. Um, and as it's drying, you know, you just kind of, if you see something that looks like you need to soften it or blend it out, you can do that or add a little more color also. Uh, whatever you think it needs. but. You know, my thing is always don't overwork it, okay? Because sometimes fresh is better and let the paint do what it wants to do. And I think I'm going to leave it right like that and see what we have. It's got a lot of fun going on there. I can decide after this dries if I need to add or do anything else maybe to the land or the sky to make them kind of connect to each other. Maybe add a little of one color to the, maybe some of the yellow to the sky or vice versa and uh, bring it together so that it's more like a piece, not like two separate things going on there. 
But there you have it. The washes are variegating, blending into each other, making some beautiful, interesting things that I could not do on purpose. Okay? Variegated. I'm sorry, variegated is how I think it's pronounced. I'm not saying that totally correctly. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed the video and the demonstration of technique of variegated washes. Now, um, you can use these in many different ways. I do use a lot in backgrounds. Um, and you can just use these merging colors together in a totally non-representational way, or it can become something more um, intentional. I mean, you can even have washes blend in an animal or uh, human skin and just have those colors blend together. There's so many ways to do it. Um, I'm actually using it in this uh, background of this bird here. And this is just the white of the bird left out, but then, um, and I took a little masking fluid and then I put the variegated washes blending together in the background. And some of it I've added some salt and texture to to create a little bit of some back uh, foliage, which it will become in due course. Uh, and then I'm practicing you know, the bird in a little more of a, you know, on a sketch pad just to, to see how I want it to look before I actually implement the bird and the, um, the tree trunk or whatever that is is sitting on in there. And, um, and then I will bring that in when I get it the way I like it so I can have that more planned out and a little more precise, but the background's that flowing wash. So I hope you enjoyed learning about this wonderful technique. It's a really valuable one to have in your repertoire of work and it makes watercolor much more, like I said, exciting and fun. Um, once you are willing to let, let go of control a bit and let watercolors do their own thing, you really start to get some dynamic paintings going, right? So I really hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, the next one I want to do is talk about values, which um, you may have seen some of the colors in the variegated where I went more watery and more light color to getting into the intense colors, which are fully concentrated. So we can focus in on that to get some really good perspective in our work. So stay tuned for the next video. If you like this video, please click on the like and subscribe and let's keep going. And we're going to have a uh, continued fun with our journey and our spiritual experience in life, which is watercolor. <laughs> Welcome back to the Spirit of Watercolor. See you next time.